Hey, in this video I want to look at two of the more common types of patch bay and look at why we use them, how we use them and different types of routing available within each type. So stick around and we'll have a better look at these. So the reason that I started to use patch bays was because I had more outputs for my gear than I had inputs for my mixer. I've now started using an interface rather than a mixer and I do most of my editing now in Ableton. I was using the Roland Ira range and running most of my gear through the MX-1 mixer. But the MX-1 mixer doesn't allow for recording effects. So I found myself building quite a large effects rack. In fact, I find myself building quite a large everything, really. So using the Behringer Ultra Patch Pro, I'm able to take the outputs from nearly all of my gear and run them into the ins on the back using a normalised routing. Now you can see from the normalised routing here that it flows in and goes straight back out of the back at the bottom. From there, the majority of it goes into my interface. Now not all of my channels will go into my interface, it only has 16 channels available. So say for example I want to route the Vintage Synth, the MVS1. I know that this comes in on channels 21 and 22 for left and right. So that comes out of the top. And I can plug that into say channel 8 which would ordinarily be the K2. And that should be playing through now. But let's say I want to add effects to that. I use this patch bay as my interface patch bay. And the unit up here at the top, the Pro L, I use for my effects as a send and return patch bay. So if I send out from 21 to the MVS left, I can send that into the bottom. This is demi-normalized or semi-normalized. I'll, I'll show a picture of this uh, shortly underneath. This is a different type. Rather than being switchable like the Behringer, this is um, removable cartridge types. You reverse the cartridges within the patch bay itself to change the routing between normalised and not normalised. So I can send this now straight out and this is going into the Zoom RFX 1000 and then I can take a return from there, break the normalisation of the K2 and send this through. But now we can create a chain of effects by sending that rather than back to the interface we can send it straight to the blue studio quad and then out to the interface that's a nice space reverb so now we have two effects units and one hell of a noise. So we've been able to send one synth through two effect units without having to move any gear around at all, uh, looking around the back of equipment. It's just there in front of us. The way I've set up my interface patch bay going across on bank A which is the top row so that's coming in at the back and out of the front on normalization. I have the DeepMind 12 left and right, the Hydrosynth left and right, the DeepMind 6 left and right, the Pro 1, the K2, the Microcorg left and right, um, the monologue, 
drum brute, Electrode 2 left and right, Electrode 2S left and right, Mini Brute 2S, the Model D, the Top Neutron, the Bottom Neutron, the MVS1 left and right, the Crave and the TD3. I have the MX1 mixer directly wired straight into channels 13 and 14 on the interface just because it's always going to be in use. I'm always going to be using the IRA gear. And then for the sends on the Pro L patch bay, I have left and right going into the RFX 1000, um, left and right going into the Zoom 1201 Studio. Then I have several blanks. Channels 8, 9, 10 and 11 go into the Blue Studio Quad, the four inputs. The returns for these are all coming out just below where it goes in. It makes it so easy just to patch gear directly either to the interface of which I don't have enough channels or into several effects units. The reason why I've patched such as the DeepMind and the Hydrosynth into both left and right going into the interface is that I can bypass one of them, I can plug it in and I've still got a full channel from that one synth. If I'm not needing it, then I can record both channels from it. It allows me to add effects to one or to pan them when recording and just generally play around with it. So let's look at the patch bay routing. Firstly, we can check the Pro-L. This is a Pro-L PBR-48. Now, if you're not familiar with them, Google them. I'll put the name up here. It's a PBR-48 Pro-L. Honestly, it, it's worth Googling. Um, just don't do it when there's kids in the room. It's not at all what I was expecting to come across on the internet. God knows why. If we take a look... Take a look underneath. You can see the labels here on how these cartridges, this front panel pops off and you just literally flip them around, rotate them by 180 degrees and that gives you the difference here between normalised and not normalised. I don't know if you can make this out, I'm just going to grab the camera and bring it a little bit nearer. Normalised and then rotated for not normalised. And the routing is inside. On routing. So if we take a look on the back of the Behringer Ultra Patch Pro, the model PX2000 that I have in my rack, it has icons explaining what the different switching modes are. To begin with, there's open, where the signal flows straight through. Then we have normaled, which normally comes in at the back and leaves out of the back, the, the way that my interface is connected. If we plug into the top row at the front, this breaks that normalisation. It allows us to either reroute the signal or we can listen in with headphones and it breaks the normalised connection so it'll, it'll disconnect it from exiting through the back of the patch bay. The same if we plug into the bottom row, that breaks the normalisation coming in from the top. If both top and bottom on the front are plugged into, then it acts just as though it was open. With half normaled, it still acts like normalisation coming in at the top at the back and leaving out at the bottom. Unless we plug in at the top front, which allows us to listen in and it still sends the signal regardless. Or we can split the signal this way too. If we plug into the bottom, then it breaks the normalisation. And if we plug into both, then it's the same as open. If we have the patch bay switched to parallel, then where the signal comes in at the back, at the top, it sends that signal out through the other three. So that's out top and bottom on the front and out to the bottom on the back as well. Anyway, I hope that this has helped. Take some notes, um, make some screenshots. As usual, uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Any questions you have... Um, Drop them in the comments below and I'll and I will answer them. As usual, many thanks.